happy birthday as well. You always find the latest courtyard. And in solution, hey, in out of the box. Hello and welcome to Radio Waves by Todd Herbert. If you enjoy reviews, comparisons, band scans of new and classic portable radios, then make sure to subscribe and tap the bell icon to miss any most excellent videos. In front of us we have the Eaton Elite Executive. This is an AM, FM, long wave, short wave with single side band and air band portable radio. I got this off Amazon for a total of $149.99. Now the prices range from $175.99 down to $128.99. So if you keep watch with the links down below, you might find this radio at 128 and what a bargain that is. So let's go ahead and show you this Elite Executive. A new color scheme and a new leather jacket for it. You can see that. So the box is pretty much like the old box. It shows some band coverages there, which we'll go over. Some bullet points there. And on the back of the box, a list of some of the items it has and features. There you go. And then picture the radio again. So let's go ahead and open the box up. It did come sealed. I had to break the seal. When you open your radio, it'll be like this. You'll have your manual, but I think the manual was underneath the radio. You'll have your AC adapter. And you'll have the radio. Now to get the radio out, the trick is to pull these little inserts out. Take that out. We'll set that aside. And we'll flip this over. You can see the antenna there on the bottom side. And we'll just kind of push the radio out. Okay. So let's go over what they give us first, and then we'll go over the radio. So I'm just going to move this aside for a moment. So the first thing is we get an AC adapter. I believe it's 6 volts. Yeah, there you go. And uh, there's the rating there, 500 milliamps. And then you have your positive center and sleeve negative. So nice, simple AC adapter. Nice to see this also charges nickel metal hydride batteries that are installed in the radio. And I'll kind of talk about that as we review the radio. Okay, next we have the manual. We're gonna spend a few minutes here. So if you wanna fast forward, be my guest. This is for posterity. For people who ask all the time what, what's what in the manual, they can use my video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go slowly, turn these pages, and maybe I can set it on here. I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit. And that way we can just flip the pages and you guys can pause and read as needed. So then it's here for posterity forever on this video, which is really nice. So you see the button fun functionality, which I'll talk about. Get all that on the frame. I think I can. And we'll just go through these pages fairly quickly. And again, you can pause to see what you need to do. And you could zoom in too. So I get all that. Yeah, I believe that's there you go on the bottom. Okay. Yes, I know I'm spending a bit of time doing this, but you know it's going to be a good thing for people who need to find something out that I might have missed while talking about the radio. Important resetting the radio, tuning the stations, frequency step list, and hopefully this was good and we can zoom in if we have to full screen it and see what you need to see. There's your auto tuning storage system, which I really don't like to use, but we'll talk about that too if we get time. And we'll just go a little quicker now because yeah, this is copy pasting stuff. This is how to set the radio, which we'll talk about. 9K, 10K switching, tuning, single sideband. And I think we're getting towards the end here about talking about charging the batteries, which I was gonna mention, using the synchronous detector. Pretty neat that it has that. And at the back here, we have some information about warnings and, and whatnot. And contact us. There you go. And your warranty information. Okay, so that's the manual. I spent some time there, but I wanted to do that. That way it's on video forever. Here you go. The Elite Executive Manual. All right, next is the radio. Bring it up front and center. Uh, let's go over dimensions, and then we'll do some size comparisons. Uh, so we have six and three quarter inches across. That includes the tuning knob here. We have a width of four inches, and we have a depth of one and five eighths of an inch. That includes the antenna on the back there. So for size comparison, what I'm gonna do now is take this leather cover off. Now if you notice, this leather cover is a feature of the radio. It says Elite Series. It's like a darker wood, uh, darker uh, rawhide type, uh, rawhide <laughs> leather cover um, than the original 
uh, executive. The executive that came before this has a lighter colored one. I do like the color contrast. So it's magnetics uh, here in the top that stick to the speaker grill to keep it shut. So what we're going to do is just pull this antenna up, take the cover off, just slides right off that antenna. We're going to put that aside, and then we're going to do some size comparisons with that off. So first things I like to do is show you the original. Let me bring this up. Uh, there's the Grundig edition. This is the executive satellite. This is the one that preceded this radio. There you go. You can see they're pretty much identical. Identical display, identical buttons, identical features. Everything is the same except the color combination and then the cover. That's about it. So if you want to stop the video right now, be my guest. Uh, but make sure to watch the review video, either this one or the one I've already done on the original satellite. So it's just a color change, but it's still fun to go over. So let's do that. Next we have a CC Pocket. Bring it out. CC Pocket fits pretty much right where the speaker grill is there. Give you an idea of the depth of this radio. Okay, and then we have Mr. Iron Man. He's the man with the master plan. He can do it like no one can. Yeah, that's perfect right there. So you get the idea. All right. So we're going to get down close and personal to the radio. We're going to talk about features. And then we'll do some audio tests and FM reception reports. So yeah, stay tuned for that fun stuff. <laughs> okay, features of the uh, Eaton Elite. Looks like I have fingerprints on the front already. Look at that. Always keep a cloth handy. There we go. Okay, on the left-hand side, uh, we have an antenna input jack for your shortwave and FM and airband, which is really nice. We have a DX local switch. So if you're using... A strong antenna you have a little bit of an attenuator here uh, here we have a headphone jack for fm stereo headphone experience it's about uh, decent on mids not much in highs not a ton of lows but good for mids which means good for shortwave listening good for news sports uh, general music it's uh it does lack a bit on the bass side i noticed here's your dc input for six volts to so use the ac adapter to power the radio and also to charge the batteries Going to the front of the radio, we have a metal speaker grill, which I'm going to lower this down again. And behind here, we have about a two and a half inch speaker. It could be two and three quarter inches. I think it extends past here just a little bit to give you an idea. Uh, elite executive in bold white lettering. I do like the color contrast of the white lettering on this gunmetal color metallic plastic. It looks really nice. We have our display here. As you can see, there's a lot of functions. Uh, we have an alphanumeric display there for naming your banks of presets. We have the time setting that comes over here when the radio is on. We have the single strength indicator, a bandwidth narrow filter display, single sideband, lower sideband. We, our clock and frequency display will be there. What band we're on. The mode we're tuning at, fast, slow, stop. And then, of course, if we're in a weekday mode, they call it, which is the frequency mode, or if we're in the page mode. So there you go. Okay, so buttons here. These are important. You got seven of these buttons. It looks like they're function buttons, F1 through F7. So when the power's off on the radio, which I want to do this, I'm going to turn this light on. You hit this button here and you can toggle the light to different brightnesses. We'll put it on the low. So F1, F2, F3, F4, these toggle your alarms. So you can have four alarms. <laughs> I don't know, it's pretty cool if you're doing multiple programs, uh, recording, or you just want to be notified of when your show comes on. It's kind of nice, but you have that ability. Uh, let's go ahead and just accept that. Use the page time to accept anything you do to change. F5 here is your key to change 9K, 10K on the medium wave. And also for FM, you have 87.5, 87 you have 64 to 108, you have 87 to 108, and you also have 76 to 108. So you have four different FM bands to choose from there. Okay, accept that one, that's mine. Uh, F6 uh, is the, this is interesting, let me go ahead and press this, uh, has three options, delay, five, stop, and ATS. So when you use these up and down uh, browse buttons, when you press and hold and let go, the radio will automatically tune to the next station, what it finds, and stays on there for five seconds, and then continues on. If you select stop, when you do this, it'll find a station, then stop completely, and if you do ATS, when you press and hold the up here or up or down, it'll automatically store the stations found. So it'll engage the auto tuning system, uh, which is something I don't tend to use. I like to manually add my presets. And then F7, of course, does our charging. So if you press and hold this, it comes up with charge and a number. 
And so what this means is how many hours do you want to charge the radio? And they say if you have, say, 2,000 milliamp hour uh, rated batteries, you would go 20 hours to charge it because it charges at a very low rate. So if you had 2,500 milliamp hour batteries, you'd go to 25. So that's how they list it in the manual there. So we'll go back to zero. Okay, so let's go ahead and accept that. Uh, next, we have a few other buttons here. There's a lot to go over. Um, it's fun. It's, you know, I haven't done this in a long time, so let's, let's do it again. A uh, time zone button to change your clock. A uh, line in function so you can turn the line in on. We have a copy paste button. We have an erase button. We have the light button and the edit button. The edit button lets us name our preset banks uh, into, the, into an alphanumeric display there. So you have eight letters to describe each bank. And you get 100 banks, which is really nice. So a total of 700 presets. Here we have numeric uh, keypad, pretty basic. Down here on the bottom, we have our band select. We have a dedicated FM button that toggles the air band. Our zero button toggles long wave, medium wave. Our AM button, of course, toggles short wave and uh, meter bands, which is nice. So you can cycle your meter bands. Over here, we have wide and we have narrow and we have stereo and mono. So in FM mode, you have stereo, FM mode, of course, mono. And then when you're in AM, short wave, long wave, medium wave, you use these keys to change the bandwidth. And I believe even air band, you can change the bandwidth. Here we have the upper, lower side band mode, RDS mode for RDS information on FM. is that RDS, which is nice. Here's your AM sync button and to toggle that on and off. Over here, we have the page time feature. This lets us uh, access our preset banks. And I'll show you that in a little bit. Lock button. The power button acts as a sleep feature, which is really nice. The neat thing about this radio is we turn it on. You can tap this once. You can enter in. Oh, turn it down. I'll get all that one second. I had it on. Uh, you can change your sleep by just uh, tapping that and then, of course, dialing this up to wherever sleep you want. Or when the radio is off, you can actually type a number in. And then you can hit on. And it'll actually, whoops, I did it too quickly. I'll do it again, 30 minutes. I'll come up here, sleep 30. So it's a nice little thing to know. I didn't know about that. So go ahead and turn that off. All right, because we're not done with the feature list yet. <laughs> There's your tuning up and down. You can manually touch these to do uh, incremental manual tuning. And of course, browse tuning. Tuning wheel. We have a fast, low stop and fine tuning on this tuning knob. Here we have a volume control, line in and out. On the back, we have our 36 inch antenna. It's amazing, I know. <laughs> a back flip out stand. Pretty simple. There's our frequency chart. Long wave is more expanded all the way to the top to medium wave, so that's kind of nice to know. And of course it takes four AA batteries, which you guys are going to want to see. We'll open this up. Hinge battery compartment. Top batteries, the positives are going to the right. The bottom row of batteries, the positives are going to the left. So two on top, two on the bottom, giving us our six volts. So go ahead and put that back, and let's talk about FM reception, then we'll turn this radio on and tune it a little bit. So let's go ahead, clip this over. Yeah, I'm doing a pretty extensive talk review because I have done quite a bit of a demonstration on this radio already with other the other versions. So uh, FM reception report is excellent. Uh, well, actually, it's very good to excellent. I found 86 stations. Uh, it's a four and a half star rating. It's right there up with the big boys with FM reception. Very impressed with it. Uh, yeah, it's a no brainer. That's why I mentioned it. 125 bucks, 128 bucks. You buy this radio and you just don't look back. Um, FM selectivity was also very good to excellent. So overall, this radio gets a four and a half star rating out of five star. It's just an amazing FM receiver. It's probably one of the best radios in FM that I have compared to my uh, Eaton uh, Field BT and also my Seacrane EP Pro, which is also excellent on the FM band. And I believe the Sanjin uh, PRD15 is also a monster on FM. So those are the ones that are, get these higher ratings. This one's right there with the big boys. Nice to hear. So let's go ahead and turn it on and we'll do a little audio. I have a C-Cream FM transmitter 2 transmitting some audio on 92.9 megahertz so you get a little idea what it sounds like.
you get an idea. A little bit of a high-pitched whine probably because of the proximity to the transmitter. I'm a little too close for this radio. It's super sensitive. So we'll go ahead and turn that off. Okay, so let's go ahead and show you the tuning now on FM. Fast, it's going to go uh, by 100 kilohertz stepping, as you can see. And I'm fine. I believe it is at 10 kilohertz stepping. Let's go ahead and go down to slow. And there you go. You can see how it goes 10 kilohertz up. So you can fine tune, which is really nice on the FM band. And of course, you can direct enter a frequency um, if I enter a very strong vocal and then hit uh, the meter band you're on. It'll take you there. And then you can see it's got the FM. Got some music going on there. Uh, and of course, you can cycle the information here by this button. No data, news, <laughs> should say music, but it doesn't. Okay, so you get the idea on the FM. Uh, we'll go to air bands, pretty basic there. Normally I have uh, not much. Center on volume 4091 is uh, just now climbing through 10. Well, that's a pretty strong signal. I don't have the antenna up yet. <laughs> Let's bring the antenna up. Uh, uh, I think you put in our final as uh, 16,000, 16,000 for on 4091. And we can squelch it. Which uh, we're climbing nice. to 15 now. Sorry about that. So now we're in squelch mode. By pressing and holding in the tuning knob, you're able to enter that and then change Normal the value. Normal speed up to 16,000 and uh, clear direct to quote on my 4091X. And of course, tuning is similar. You can tune slow. And then of course, yeah, well, that's really tuning slow. And you can also change the bandwidth here on the air band. Here's their different ones. Cycle them real quick for you. Love that up and down is really nice and handy. And of course, uh, yeah, if we could push it in once, we can go stop and then we can go to fast. And you can see fast tuning, I believe, goes 25 kilohertz. There you go. It's pretty good. So I'm going to turn off the squelch. The issue with the squelch is if you have it on, it'll uh, squelch your other stations too, like your shortwave, your AM, your FM. <laughs> it's weird how squelch works in all the other bands too. Yeah, some people might want that. So let's head on over to the shortwave band. I'm going to collapse my antenna here. Hook up a little wire so I can get a little reach outside the window. Let's see what I got here. I got a little tiny Texan PL380 wire. We're going to clip onto the antenna. Switch to the shortwave band. Okay, there's our time signal. Current time is 10. Well, he said 10.36 p.m. Central Daylight Time near Chicago, Illinois. Of course, he gave UTC. So we can just single tap. Press and hold. It's in browse mode, so I had to stop it. Scan goes very quickly too, which is nice. It automatically changes the meter bands as it goes. And it should find a few more trouble, solutions. Trouble, calamity. That's gonna face it. Calamity, oh no. Calamity Jones. <laughs> and that's Notice a few things here. Notice that God gives the property. God decides. And pretty sensitive. It stopped early when it found the noise of uh, the signal. God That's pretty nice. Each according to their ability. Hmm? God is considering your frame and your form, okay? God knows so what you fashioned you. and created you to do. He knows what you can do. He knows what you will do. I have Not sure if we'll find any hams, but we can uh, I forget where we start here. It's been a while. <laughs> We'll go 3600 and scan. See if we can't find anybody. Nope, can't do that. Okay, there might be a hand here, but it's pretty noisy. What you do to hear them is you hit this side, single sideband button. And you toggle it to lower sideband. And you press here, and you fine tune it.
So if you don't find them, go exit the single side ammo right there. And you can just scroll down looking for them again. Okay, we're gonna go back up to this. I'll show you this also takes you to different ones. Different meter bands, 41, and it might not 49. have been this case, but it's Let's use this one. Was given. They have every strength, every so we'll scan up a little bit, then we'll go to the medium wave and show you that and how that is. By our peoples in defense of humanity. Notes of the revolution. Now it's in delay mode. That was fun. A lot of stations on this. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to the. Let's stop this. Turn it. Okay, so we are going to go to fast. Go to the medium wave band, or long wave actually. Just connect this. I'm going to retract the antenna. Now, if you listen very carefully, we're getting a little beacon on an airport north of me. Small airport. So I can get something on long wave. That's it. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and go to medium wave. Well, he did so little damage to the games in Washington. He has done so much. 540 WAUK, Jackson, Wisconsin. This is 70 miles away, 400 watts. Now, if you think you can find something, you hit the sync button. And you can change from lower sideband sync to upper sideband sync. And you can slow tune. That sometimes helps you find a lock on a station, so go ahead and turn that off. Back to fast. Skin and soft, shiny coat. But no itchy, harsh chemicals. Chicago. We'll go up to some stations we know. There's a WSM, Nashville, Tennessee, about 440 miles. Hello, this is Corey. Hi, Allie from Easy Cater. Chicago Are Station. You of course, I live near Chicago, Illinois, USA. Here's our current time. Signal strength indicator. Working really well, too, by the way. For those of you who want to know, I'm going to have some follow-up daytime and evening medium wave band scans. WLW, Cincinnati, Ohio. This one here is about 300 miles away. Yeah, people have been very careful. The, 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 they made a final deal, and the, and the teachers agreed to it. WGN right? Chicago. Having agreed to it. They... We got music uh, coming in on Zoomer Radio, CFZM, Toronto, Ontario, 460 miles. Atlanta, Georgia, WSB, 650 miles. Let's run clip four. Let's see what that one's on. Now, there were some politicians. We got WGR Detroit, Michigan, about 300 miles. Tonight, but with the 
fires up in the wine country. That's not my opinion. That is, it's a fact that is documented. Right. And in my article... WABC, in New York, New York. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go up to some other stations, like distant stations. That's KOA Denver. The other night I picked it up nice. CJBC, Toronto. Stoprex.org, a message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council. New Yorkers love the fall. There's so much to see. WCBS, New York, New York, 750 miles. Zero parking app help you see and do everything you want faster and more conveniently. Completely lost. Okay, usually this is CHML. Now I'm getting a Hispanic station on 700. I don't know if I had this problem before. I'm going to figure out what this is. Go up to 1020. Administration. It was like a civil service. KDKA Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 450 miles. WBZ, Boston, Massachusetts. So it's just kind of cruise up. Yeah, this thing's very sensitive in the evening. Passionate social reformers. Cleveland, Ohio, I believe, but WTAM. The wildest story I've ever had in KMOX St. Louis, about 300 miles. Three earned runs. Would he be in the game for the final three outs to win the World Series? WRVA, Richmond, Virginia. This one's about 665 miles. Infield, it'll be Cabrera, the second baseman, and that is out number one. Happy Ken, I want to ask you something about the psychology of leaders. This is WHAM, Rochester, New York. How much? We'll go right to the top of the dial here because I'm going to do a more thorough band scan. For such things to happen. KXCL and go 1610. CHHA, Toronto, Ontario, 460 miles. I think top of the dial, 1700 for me. For years and years, were a uh, highly touted team, picked to go to the World Series. KBGG, Des Moines, Iowa. Okay, so we're going to turn this off. Do final thoughts. Overall impressions, what an amazing radio. Um, I do like the XH Data D808. I always have it handy. Speaking of the 808, here it is. I'll give you an idea for size comparison. Yeah, um, great radio, inexpensive. I think it's like 80 bucks versus, you know, 150 uh, if you, like I said, you get this on sale for 125 get it all day long. The Silly Executive is amazing. Uh, it's definitely more sensitive on shortwave with its built-in antenna than the XH Data and the Digitech uh, 1780, uh, but those are just less expensive and single sideband radios also. Uh, I do like those radios. This one does have decent audio. I love the audio. I love the ability to set all these presets. Like I said, you get seven uh, on each bank and you get a hundred banks of them. I use this to do it and you can name each bank. Uh, we didn't really go into super detail, but this video went long enough. So if you enjoyed the Eaton Elite Executive presentation, let me know. Give me a big like. You guys are awesome. Two, if you like Eaton Radio's Elite Executive, hit subscribe at the bell icon. Get notified of those future videos that I plan to make with this radio, which is the medium wave daytime, medium wave evening for sure. And of course, three, comment below. What do you think about the Elite Executive? Would you get this? If you found this one cheap, would you pick up the earlier mod? Do you like the silver better? You can still pick these up, but right now they're about the same price as this. So for me, I like this better. Just the color combination, the white lettering, uh, I do like that better. Uh, easier to read for sure. And then, of course, um, yeah, keep an eye on that price. I'll have links below and check it out. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode.